<laughs> the Nasdaq under a lot of pressure following Microsoft and Alphabet. Having concerns about the Mag 7? A, a little bit. I mean, Google was a miss. Tesla was a miss. Microsoft wasn't a miss at all. So I think maybe a little profit taking or just investor fatigue. I'm going to pull from the, my favorite artist, Tania Twain. That don't impress me much. It's like <laughs> it has to be just a blowout earnings really to move these stocks higher. A beat just didn't do it anymore. It was expected it was going to be a beat. So I think you are seeing a little bit of caution on, yes, if you meet expectations, that's great. But we're going to need more from that uh, for growth. But I think Microsoft could rally out of this. It's really not bad down too bad. Right. It's really Google that and the ad revenue mess that, that's really dragging us down here. All right. So you gave us your favorite Shania Twain lyric. Now your wax word of the day. <laughs> it's seatbelt because I'm going to say buckle up buttercup. It might get a little <laughs> bumpy this earnings season. And that's totally normal. Like we're just seeing a lot of volatility. Valuations are obviously very priced in at this moment for, for earnings growth. And so you may see this little peaks and valleys. We can't hit a record every single day, Frank. So some of this is expected. Some of this is just investors repricing in what they see with the Fed, what they see with earnings growth. But none of these companies has recorded necessarily earnings decline. You're seeing the Mag 7 make a lot of money. Investors just want to see them make a little bit more. <laughs> just a little bit more. Just a little bit. Um, so obviously earnings season still in full swing. We have some other big companies yet to report. But today the big event, of course, is the Fed decision. So what are you expecting from that? How do you see that impact in the markets? Obviously, it's a no decision. I think if they, they do any changes today, that I fall out of my right. chair. But, but the press conference. But the press conference is what I'll be watching. I think they're going to say, number one, data dependent. We could get our Fed bingo card out. <laughs> All right, right, hold on. Let me check that one there. Yeah. You know, that should be the center square there. Uh, but they're going to leave options on the table. I think March is still too early. Futures have, you know, swaps continue to price that in less and less. It's around 35 40% chance now from March, down from about 60 70 earlier this month. So I think March is off the table for me. I think we're going to see what labor comes in on Friday. I think you're going to see him data dependent, leave options on the table, not paint himself into a corner, maybe a little bit hawkish to continue to keep the market from, from pricing in too aggressively because that's when the pain starts. If the market's pricing in too many cuts and the feds don't okay. see it in the cards, it's painful. You know, I'm, I'm going to hit the brakes. I know you got your seatbelt on. You're saying March is already off the table. I mean, we have a jobs report coming up. We have more inflation reports before March. Why is it already off the table? And, and then how does the, the market react yeah. if Jay Powell even hints that it's off the table? I, I think it's off the table. It's too early. I think it may or may or most likely June is, is yeah. would be where you'd see kind of the traditional cut start. If you look at the timing of when we stopped hikes, which was July last year, this 12-month lag, totally normal between uh, the pause and the cut coming in. So for me, I just don't think the data's there. You're not seeing upward inflation pressure. You're seeing strong job okay. numbers. I know Jolt's surprised a little bit, but Jolt's honestly right now is being moved around a lot by the survey results. They're just not getting that many return surveys. So right. ADP is important. Jobs reports important. But if you have strong labor and inflation is stable and okay. they want to avoid 70s, 80s, they're, they're not going to want to cut too soon. Very quick. You gave us two picks. Which one are you the most confident about, like the elevator pitch on it? All right, I'm going to go out here. I think Meta picked up the ad revenue. I know it's a little bit of a risk, and they're coming down this morning, but Google didn't have the ad revenue. I think it all went to Meta, and I think their numbers are, are going to be strong enough to see a pop. Uh, do you think the year of efficiency, does it continue? Because a lot of talk about margins when it came to both Alphabet and Microsoft. I do. I mean, Zuckerberg has been pointing on that, continuing to reduce headcount. So we want to see where did, did ad revenue growth. We saw a lot of growth in China, potentially, from some of the Chinese e-commerce. What are your daily average users? And then if they can continue to reduce headcount and increase margins, more net profits for investors, that's right. a good thing to like. And investors like a CEO that's trying to put more money in their pockets.